To identify a specimen of Quercus cerris, look for the following features. From semi-maturity onwards, the bark is noticeably and rather deeply fissured, more so than Quercus roba or Quercus betraya. This is a monoecious species, so male and female flowers born on the same tree. The male catkins are rather filigree and pubescent structures, born in only small numbers with rather spread clusters of stamens uh, hanging down from the spray. Here, a close-up of the female flowers, normally born in singly or in clusters of two to three, very close to the twig itself. And here you can see that they are rather pubescent with relatively bright stigma, but they're very small structures, not normally very conspicuous. The acorns they develop into, however, are a very good recognition feature for Quercus cerus because of the mossy nature of the acorn cups that can be seen here. The form of the tree is also noticeably different from that of Quercus roba or Quercus betraya, having longer, stretching, more well tapered, less dog legged limbs. The foliage is born alternately on the twigs, new growth being light green, older twigs typically rather silver to brown in colour. And the leaves themselves very variable in shape, normally deeply incised with a number of triangular lobes, never regularly pinnately lobed, always rather irregular and typically three times as long as they are wide. And the alternate buds have also a distinguishing feature in that they have whiskers uh, protecting them which w one wouldn't get in Quercus robo or Quercus petraea and of course a cluster of buds at the terminal end which is typical of Quercus.